All right, I have something of a book recommendation for you all. Um, and it's called On Looking by Alexandra Horowitz. And it's about a woman that she has a routine. She lives in New York City and she has this area that she frequents. And she began to realize that even though she sees, she doesn't really see because it's so familiar. So she decided to get 11 experts, more or less, to come around her and to kind of guide her with their eyes into what they see. And as she did, she learned more about her environment. She learned more facts, things that she didn't know, she, that she hadn't appreciated. Um, like, for instance, uh, a typographer, someone who does letters and creates fonts and things like that. Another is uh, actually just a blind person, a person who is blind, who doesn't have the ability to see. And so began to look at how the, they interact with the world without the ability of sight. Another person was a, a sound technician, a sound engineer, someone who makes sounds for like, um, like feature films and things, a Foley artist. How they hear their environment and how they get immersed through the way that things sound. And another was an, just an entomologist, someone who studies insects and bugs in an environment. And how in a city, the, what different markings mean for their, their insect population and for vegetation, just things like that. Things that you see a million times in a day, but you just don't see it. And how uh, it gets to the very end and she's kind of going on her own. She does another walk with her dog and kind of summing up of just the things that she had learned and the things that, um, that had caused her to begin to reevaluate her perception and the presuppositions that she holds and stuff and uh, it was really really good so five out of five definitely recommend it only took about eight hours to listen at regular speed so um, very easy um, it's read by the author even so it's on audible it's on um, uh, I'm sure it's available through Amazon the hard copy if that's what you prefer but uh, highly recommend it it's really really good but there's some really interesting spiritual takeaways that I think can be gathered up from this. Um, the first is, so she went through and did kind of a, uh, like a, a control, where she went by herself to kind of see what she could perceive with just her senses without any, any assistance, see what she would see, so that she could reflect on that later. And then the next one that she did was with her child, a toddler, young, uh, limited uh, language skills, and just what is the what does a child see? And she began to marvel at how delighted children are with their surroundings, things that we consider mundane, simple, that they're just overwhelmed by, and how she began to kind of whimsically wish that her child could stay that way rather than her like, rather than him actually growing up and becoming kind of jaded and callous like we all do that they could keep that wonder and it reminded me that the disciples at one point they were debating like who's the greatest what does it mean to be the greatest jesus responds he takes a child and puts him amongst them and says you want to be the greatest you've got to become like this child and if you don't know anything about ancient cultures, you might think, oh, well, what a, whatever, because our society values children mostly, sort of. It's, they're, they're esteemed, they're respected, we educate them, we protect them, we give them special seats in the car, we give them like all these kind of things, right? We value kids, we give them specialized programming just for them, we limit their access to the internet, like all of this. Ancient cultures were different, Even, like regardless of what ancient culture you want to highlight, they all basically viewed children until they became an adult or age of majority. They were viewed as basically the property of their parents. In fact, in Jewish culture, which is where that occurred, 
the reason there's a bar mitzvah, what that translates to is son of the promise, son of the covenant, or son of the curse, depending on who you ask. Literally, parents would, uh, fathers would pray, God, I'm grateful that his behavior, his actions are no longer my responsibility. That literally, that they, everything that that kid did, it was a reflection on the parent up until bar mitzvah and then they're an adult at 13 ish they're an adult and now they're their own being at that point but prior to that they're almost on the level of like draft animals in society below the rank of adult slaves and in that context that did not value, did not respect children, Jesus is saying, listen, you need to be like a kid. And other instances where the Bible esteems children, you have Paul that refers to them directly. Ephesians chapter 6, you have God speaking to them directly in the Ten Commandments. Like, God esteems children in a way that cultures throughout the world simply have not done. And that's something that parents should be keyed in on in a special way which is really special to me right now with the expectation of becoming a parent soon that like there's something beheld within it that the whole purpose of this originally was a cure or the idea behind the book was a cure behind something that the bible refers to in regards to parables that people, the, the religious, that they see, but they don't understand. That they hear, but they don't comprehend what they're hearing, because the Holy Spirit has closed them off. And I think most of the time, we go through life experiencing life like that, just closed. We're not open to hearing what God would have us to 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 would have to say to us and so as a result we just miss it in the same way that she prior to all of this would miss the beauty and the 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 intricacy of language all over the signs and lettering of buildings and the 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 messages and what all these different markings on buildings markings on the trees, marking on the letter, like all that stuff. there It was always there. But she didn't have the lenses on, her eyes, to be able to see it the way someone else could. And I think the reason the Bible exists is to kind of take those lenses away. But it's important to note something. And it's important that you listen to the nuance of what I'm about to say so that you don't mistake its meaning. It's going to sound like I'm saying something that I'm not. Theology is not just the study of God's Word. It's the study of God. It's the learning about God himself. Theo, God, ology, study of. And of course, like... The Bible is still our standard. We still go to it. It's what's been revealed about God. But if you're going to this text without a mind to experience God first, then you will be just like those Pharisees. You will see without seeing. And you will hear without understanding. And you'll miss it. You need a guide, the Holy Spirit himself, to show up and to reveal himself to you. Because the Bible is very clear. In fact, that nature itself, that our experiences with other human beings, the church, the stars, all these things are in their own way. Um, the bedside of sick and the dying, that they are in their own ways um, academies for us to learn about ourselves, to learn about God as the comforter, for us to learn about God and the Holy Spirit 
in each other. They're, they're academies for us to learn in. And quite honestly, for most of the time, we're just too busy and we are too ignorant of our... We just don't have our eyes open to see. And so, like I said, check out this book. I don't think she's a Christian. I'm pretty confident that she wouldn't be. But still, you can learn a lot. And I guarantee you, you listen to this book, or you read it, it'll change the way you view your environment, the things you see, and the things that you value on your daily, daily basis. And I think that it can give you an influx of spiritual value that you've probably been missing otherwise.